in a land where mist clung to the earth like a shroud. There was a village nestled in the shadow of the forbidden mountains. It was a place forgotten by time, where the winds whispered secrets older than any living soul, and the trees stood still, as though listening. The villagers spoke little of the past, for the past was a dangerous thing. But there was one story, passed down in hushed tones by the elders, that could not be silenced. It was the legend of the dragon's heartstone. The story began as all dark legends do, with a warning. Seek not the heartstone, the elders would say, their voices brittle like old parchment, for it is said to grant the power of a god, but the price is more than any mortal can bear. They would speak of those who had sought it, the brave, the foolish, the desperate, and how none had returned. Some claimed the stone was no mere treasure, but the very heart of a dragon, torn from its chest in the final moments of its life. It was said the stone pulsed with the dragon's last heartbeat, echoing the grief and rage of a creature whose power could not be contained. The dragon itself had once ruled these lands, long before the mountains were forbidden, before the village was built. It had been a creature of immense strength, its wings spanning the sky, its breath a fiery storm. But even the strongest must fall. And so it had leaving behind only its heart, transformed into a gemstone of unimaginable power. The villagers believed that the stone was hidden deep within the mountains, in a cave where the dragon's spirit still lingered. Few dared speak of the cave, let alone seek it out. Those who did, they said, would hear the dragon's voice calling to them, a low, rumbling whisper that beckoned with promises of power. But the wise knew that this was no gift. It was a curse. The heartstone did not give freely. It took. For centuries, the legend remained just that. A story a warning told by the firelight to keep the young and reckless from venturing too far into the mountains. But as with all tales of forbidden power, there were always those who could not resist the lure of the unknown. It was in the heart of winter, when the village was wrapped in frost and the nights stretched long, that a stranger appeared. Cloaked in shadow and mystery, they came without word or warning. Their arrival marked only by the sudden silence that followed them. The villagers watched from behind shuttered windows as the stranger made their way to the village square where the eldest among them sat huddled by the fire. The stranger spoke softly, their voice like the wind, slipping through the cracks in the air. Tell me of the heartstone, they said, their eyes gleaming with the reflection of the flames. The elder, a man who had lived long enough to know the weight of words said nothing at first. 
He simply stared at the stranger, as though searching for something hidden beneath their cloak. Finally, he spoke, his voice as brittle as the story he would tell. You are not the first to seek it, the elder said, his eyes narrowing, and you will not be the last. But know this, those who search for the heartstone do not return. It is not a treasure to be claimed. It is a burden, a curse. The stranger did not flinch. I seek not power, they said, but answers. The elder raised a brow. Answers come at a cost, he warned, and the heartstone's price is one that few can pay. The stranger remained silent, their gaze fixed on the flickering fire. After a long pause, they simply nodded, as if the elder's words had only confirmed what they already knew. Without another word, the stranger turned and disappeared into the night, their silhouette swallowed by the mist that clung to the village like a memory. The villagers whispered of the stranger long after they had gone, but none dared follow. They knew, as all who had heard the legend knew, that the path to the Forbidden Mountains was not one of return. The heartstone called, but it did not welcome. And so, the village remained as it always had, shrouded in mist and memory, waiting for the next soul to be claimed by the legend of the dragon's heartstone. The legend had begun its course once more. The whispers of the past stirred from their slumber. But this time, something felt different, as though the very air was holding its breath. The mist clung to the wanderer like a second skin as they walked, their footsteps soundless upon the frozen earth. The village behind them had already disappeared into the haze, its narrow streets and watchful eyes swallowed by the deep silence of the forbidden mountains. Ahead lay a path that few had dared to follow, an ancient, winding trail that led deeper into the unknown. The air was heavy with a sense of something lost, as if the land itself mourned for the souls who had ventured too far. The mountains loomed in the distance, their peaks sharp and jagged against the pale sky. Somewhere among those ridges lay the cave of the dragon's heartstone and the answers the wanderer sought. But even as they moved forward, their thoughts strayed to the elder's words. The heartstone's price is one that few can pay. The wanderer's face, hidden beneath a hood, remained expressionless. They had known the risks long before they entered the village. The heartstone's power was not their prize. There was something far deeper at play. The wanderer had heard whispers, even from distant lands, of how the heartstone could grant more than mere magic. It could reveal truths long buried, answers to questions that haunted the soul. And that was what the wanderer sought above all else. The path grew steeper, winding through thick forests. 
where the trees stood like silent sentinels, their gnarled branches reaching toward the sky in strange, twisted shapes. The air here was colder, as if it were drawn from the breath of some unseen force. As the wanderer climbed higher, the wind began to change, carrying with it faint echoes, a low, distant sound that resembled a dragon's sigh. By dusk, the wanderer reached a clearing where the trees parted like curtains to reveal the first glimpse of the mountain's towering cliffs. In the fading light, the rock formations appeared almost alive, their surfaces etched with strange symbols that the wanderer had seen only in forgotten tomes. Ancient magic, older than kingdoms, older than man. The sight filled the air with an uneasy weight as though the stones themselves whispered of the tragedies that had played out here centuries ago. The wanderer paused at the edge of the clearing, feeling the pull of the heartstone like a distant heartbeat, slow and steady. It called to them, though not with the seductive lure of power, but with a strange, melancholic resonance. A reminder that what they sought was more than just knowledge. It was also the unknown, the cost of truth. As night descended, the wanderer set up camp under a canopy of stars, the sky cold and clear above them. The fire they lit crackled softly, the flames casting flickering shadows that danced at the edges of the clearing. The wind whistled through the trees, carrying with it whispers from the mountains, like a voice trying to speak but never quite forming words. It was then that the wanderer felt it, a presence, not seen but sensed like a weight pressing down from the darkened woods. Their hand instinctively went to the hilt of the blade at their side, though they knew that no weapon could guard against what waited for them in the days ahead. From the shadows emerged a figure, cloaked, much like the wanderer, though the flickering firelight revealed nothing of their face. They stood at the edge of the firelight, watching. You seek the heartstone, the figure said, their voice as cold as the night air. The wanderer didn't answer, but the silence between them was confirmation enough. Many have come before you, the figure continued. All have failed. Some sought glory, others power. None left with what they desired. I do not seek glory, the wanderer finally spoke, their voice steady. Nor power. The figure tilted their head, a gesture of curiosity or perhaps amusement. Then, what is it you seek? The wanderer's gaze lifted to the mountains, their expression hidden beneath the shadow of their hood. Answers. At this, the figure was silent for a long time, as though weighing the truth of the words. The heart stone reveals much, they said at last, but its truths are not gentle. Be certain you are prepared for what it will show you. 
the fire crackled between them, and in that moment, the weight of the journey ahead seemed to settle over the clearing like a veil. The figure turned and began to melt into the shadows, leaving the wanderer alone once more. But before they disappeared completely, they spoke one final word. A warning, or perhaps an invitation. The dragon's heart still beats, even after death. Do not forget that. As the figure vanished into the night, the wanderer remained by the fire, staring into the flames as if searching for something. The mountain path waited, winding into the unknown, and the heartstone called. But the question that lingered in the cold night air was this. When the answers came, would the wanderer still wish to know them? The mountains seemed to breathe in the distance, the stone and wind alive with ancient secrets yet to be unveiled. The days bled into each other as the wanderer pressed deeper into the mountains, their path winding like a forgotten scar along the jagged cliffs. The air grew colder with each step. The sun, a distant memory hidden behind thick clouds. The weight of the journey bore down on them, but the pull of the heartstone was undeniable, a pulse that seemed to quicken the nearer they drew to its hidden lair. By the third day, the trail had narrowed to a thin ribbon of rock, clinging to the mountainside like a thread. Below, the world fell away into an abyss of mist and shadow, the sound of rushing water far beneath them, unseen but ever-present. It was as if the earth itself whispered warnings to turn back, to abandon the quest. But the wanderer's resolve was iron, forged long before this journey began. Finally, after hours of climbing, they reached it, the mouth of the cave. It was a dark gash in the mountain's face, jagged and ancient, as though the mountain itself had once screamed and left behind this wound. The air that wafted from within was cold, carrying the scent of forgotten places, of stone and age. The heartstone was near. The wanderer stood before the entrance for a long moment, feeling the weight of its history pressing down upon them. This was the place spoken of in legends, where the dragon's heart still beat beneath the stone. Somewhere deep inside, the heart stone waited, pulsing with the power and sorrow of a creature long dead but not forgotten. With a breath that misted in the cold air, the wanderer stepped into the cave. The darkness swallowed them immediately, thick and impenetrable. But as they ventured deeper, a strange sound began to rise from the depths. Soft at first, almost imperceptible, but growing louder with every step. It was a low, distant rumble, like the echo of a great creature breathing in its sleep. The sound reverberated off the stone walls, making it impossible to tell whether it came from ahead, behind, or within the very 
very earth itself. The wanderer's footsteps echoed in the silence, the sound bouncing back at them from unseen corners, growing louder, more distorted. It was as if the cave were alive, its walls shifting and breathing with every step. The deeper they went, the more the air itself seemed to thrum with energy, as though the cave were resonating with the pulse of the heartstone, calling to the wanderer, drawing them closer. At last, the wanderer reached a vast chamber deep within the mountain. The walls stretched high, disappearing into shadow, while the floor was littered with ancient bones, remnants of creatures long since claimed by the cave. In the center of the chamber stood a pedestal of stone, carved with symbols that seemed to shift and change in the flickering light of the wanderer's torch. And there, atop the pedestal, lay the heartstone. It was no larger than a fist, a gemstone of deep, molten red that seemed to pulse with an inner light. The stone glowed faintly in the dark, casting flickering shadows on the walls that danced and twisted as though alive. The wanderer could feel its power even from across the chamber, a magnetic pull that tugged at their very soul. But as they approached, the cave shifted. A low, rumbling voice echoed through the chamber, rising from the very walls themselves. It was a voice unlike any other deep and ancient, filled with a sorrow that could not be contained. It spoke in a language forgotten by time, but the meaning was clear. You come for the heartstone, the voice rumbled, its tones like the grinding of mountains. Do you seek power as all who came before? Or do you seek something far more dangerous? The wanderer halted, the weight of the words settling over them like a shroud. They had known this moment would come, that the heartstone would not be claimed without a trial. But the voice was not what they had expected. There was no malice in it only sorrow, as though the stone itself mourned for what was about to transpire. The air grew heavier as the voice continued, filling the chamber with its presence. The heart stone is no gift. It is a burden, a curse. Those who seek it must prove their worth or they shall be consumed by the grief it holds. Will you take this burden upon yourself? Will you bear the weight of a dragon's heart? The wanderer stood in the shadow of the heartstone, their breath slow and measured. They had come seeking answers but the cost was greater than they had anticipated. The stone glowed with a power that could reshape the world, but that power was tied to something far darker, something that could break a soul. You must face what lies within, the voice whispered, softer now, more intimate as though speaking directly to the wanderer's heart. 
only then will the heartstone reveal its truth. The cave grew silent, the echoes fading into nothingness. The heartstone pulsed once more, its light casting long, flickering shadows across the chamber. The trial had begun. The wanderer stood alone, the weight of their journey pressing down as the cave seemed to breathe around them, waiting for the moment when all would be revealed. The silence in the cave was suffocating, as though the very air had been drained from the space, leaving only the echo of the heartstone's faint pulse. The wanderer stood motionless, the weight of the stone's presence pressing down like an unseen hand. And then, from the shadows, it emerged. The figure appeared slowly, as if born from the darkness itself, a shifting silhouette that coalesced into a form both familiar and alien. It was the dragon, or at least what remained of it, a spectral being, its translucent scales shimmering like mist caught in moonlight, its massive wings, tattered and ghostly, arched high above its back, and its eyes, glowing with an ethereal fire, fixed on the wanderer with an intensity that pierced the soul. The dragon's voice was not the same rumble that had filled the chamber before. It was quieter now, colder, like the whisper of a winter wind. You have come for the heartstone, it said, its words wrapping around the chamber, each syllable hanging in the air. But before you take what you seek, you must prove yourself worthy. You must face what lies hidden within you, or the stone will consume you, as it has consumed so many before. The wanderer remained still, their heart thudding in their chest. They had expected a trial, but not this. This confrontation with a being whose sorrow and power hung in the air like a storm cloud. The dragon's form shifted slightly, the light of the heartstone reflecting in its eyes. I was once like you, it said, its voice heavy with the weight of centuries. I sought answers, power, purpose, but I did not understand the cost. The heartstone is not a gift, it is a mirror, and what it shows you may destroy you. The wanderer clenched their fists at their sides. I am not here for power, they said, their voice steady despite the weight of the moment. I seek truth. At this, the dragon's eyes narrowed, and it leaned closer, its enormous face looming over the wanderer. Truth, it echoed softly. It is the most dangerous thing of all. It can free you or bind you, but once it is revealed, there is no turning back. Without warning, the dragon's form flickered, and the cave was plunged into darkness. The wanderer gasped as the ground beneath them shifted, twisting into a void that swallowed everything. It was as if the very world had been stripped away, leaving only an endless blackness. 
And then, the visions began. At first, they were faint. Flickers of faces. Voices long forgotten. But soon, they sharpened into something real. Something tangible. The wanderer saw a great battlefield. Littered with the bodies of those they had known. Had fought beside and had lost. The air was thick with the scent of blood and ash, and the cries of the dying echoed in their ears. But it was not the battlefield that tore the wanderer's soul. It was the faces. One by one, the wanderer saw them, those who had been left behind, those who had perished because of choices made long ago. Friends. Family. Their eyes were filled with accusation, with sorrow, with the pain of betrayal. Why did you leave us? One voice whispered, a figure stepping forward from the shadows. It was a face the wanderer knew well one that haunted their dreams. You promised, another voice said, broken and filled with grief. You promised to return. The wanderer recoiled, their heart hammering in their chest as the voices swelled around them, a cacophony of anguish. Each face, each word, was a dagger, cutting deeper into their soul. They had tried to forget, to bury the past beneath the weight of their journey, but the heartstone's test was relentless. There was no escaping what lay within. You failed us, the voices said in unison, rising like a storm. You will fail again. The wanderer fell to their knees, the weight of their guilt crushing them, the darkness pressing in from all sides. It was unbearable, this sorrow, this endless grief. And for a moment, they considered giving in, letting the darkness take them as it had taken so many others. But then, from deep within the void, a memory stirred. A promise, not one of power or glory, but of something greater. A promise made to those who had been lost, to find the truth, to right the wrongs of the past. The wanderer clung to that memory, that promise, like a lifeline. With a cry of defiance, they rose to their feet, their fists clenched at their sides. No, they said, their voice shaking but determined. I will not be consumed by this. I will not fail. The darkness trembled, the voices faltering, as if the very fabric of the vision were unraveling. The faces began to blur, the battlefield fading into shadow. The wanderer took a step forward, and then another, their resolve growing with each movement. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the vision shattered, and the wanderer was back in the cave. The dragon stood before them once more, its eyes gleaming with something like respect. You have faced your past, it said quietly, its voice no longer cold. But the heartstone's truth is not yet revealed. You must still choose whether to bear its burden. The wanderer's chest rose and fell with ragged breaths, 
the weight of the trial still heavy upon them. But they had survived. They had not been broken. The heart stone pulsed softly on its pedestal, waiting. The guardian's test was complete, but the final trial, the heart stone's ultimate revelation, had yet to come. The Wanderer stood on the edge of a choice. One that would change everything. The cave was still, as if holding its breath in the wake of the Guardian's departure. The spectral dragon had dissolved into the shadows, leaving the Wanderer alone with the Heartstone in the memory of the trial they had just endured. Yet, the true test had only begun. The wanderer took a cautious step toward the stone. Its glow was soft now, pulsing gently like a heartbeat in the dark. As their fingers hovered over the surface of the gem, the light flickered casting long, trembling shadows across the walls of the chamber. The wanderer hesitated, sensing that once the stone was touched, there would be no turning back. The silence deepened. It was the kind of silence that seeps into the bones, a silence that makes one feel small, fragile, and insignificant in the face of something vast and ancient. The wanderer swallowed the knot of fear rising in their throat. The journey had been long, the sacrifices many, and the answers they sought were so close now, closer than they had ever been. With the deep breath, the Wanderer reached out and grasped the Heartstone. In an instant, the cave vanished. The world fell away, and the Wanderer was plunged into a darkness so complete, it was as though they had been cast into the void itself. No sound, no light, no sense of time or place just a crushing emptiness that seemed to go on forever. But then, out of the darkness, came a flicker of light. A single spark that grew, blossoming into an image. Blurry at first, but gradually sharpening into focus. The wanderer blinked, disoriented, as they found themselves standing in a vast, open field, bathed in the warm, golden light of sunset. The sky stretched endlessly above them, the clouds tinged with hues of violet and crimson. The air was thick with the scent of wildflowers, and a soft breeze whispered across the grass. For a moment, the scene seemed peaceful, too peaceful, too perfect. But the Wanderer knew better. This was no ordinary vision. The field stretched on forever, but in the distance, barely visible at first, were figures. The Wanderer squinted, their heart clenching as the figures grew closer, their forms becoming clearer. They were people, men and women, their faces half hidden in the fading light. But these were not strangers. They were ghosts. The wanderer's breath caught in their throat as recognition dawned. The faces that now stood before them were from another life. A life filled with memories both cherished 
and painful. These were the faces of the lost, the fallen, the ones who had been left behind on the journey toward the Heartstone. The wanderer's heart ached with the weight of their presence. Among them stood a figure more familiar than any other, a figure whose absence had haunted the wanderer for years. The one who had been lost in the pursuit of answers, of truth. The figure stepped forward, their face illuminated by the dying light. There were no words between them at first, only silence. Silence that spoke of all the things that had been left unsaid. The wanderer's chest tightened with the unbearable heaviness of it. The memories, the grief, the guilt. This was what the heartstone had promised to reveal. The truth of what had been lost along the way. You should not have come, the figure finally spoke, their voice soft and full of sorrow. The wanderer's mouth went dry, their mind spinning as they searched for words. But there was nothing to say. How could there be when the truth stood before them, undeniable and unchangeable? The price of their quest had been steep, and this moment made it clear that it had been too high. You left us, the figure continued, their voice breaking slightly. For what? Power? Knowledge? The wanderer shook their head, tears burning at the edges of their vision. Not for power. I never wanted that. I needed to understand why things happened the way they did. I needed answers. Their voice faltered, the weight of regret heavy on each word. The figure looked away, their gaze distant, as if seeing something the wanderer could not. Answers won't change what happened. They won't bring us back. The words hit like a blow to the chest. The wanderer stood frozen, every part of them aching with the realization of their failure. The vision was not a punishment, but a reflection of the truth they had refused to see, that the past could not be undone no matter how many questions were answered. The Heartstone had never been a path to redemption. It was a mirror, showing the wanderer the depth of their own sorrow. I'm sorry, the wanderer whispered, their voice barely audible in the vastness of the field. The figure turned back to them, their expressions softening. It's too late for sorry, but it's not too late for you. Let go before it consumes you too. The wanderer closed their eyes, feeling the weight of the truth settle over them like a cold, suffocating blanket. The heartstone had shown them what they had lost what they could never reclaim. And now, they were faced with a choice. To hold on to the stone and the sorrow it carried, or to let go and leave the past behind. When they opened their eyes again, the field was gone, and the wanderer was alone once more in the cave their hand still resting on the heartstone. The truth had been revealed, and the 
weight of it was more than the wanderer had anticipated. Now, they stood at a crossroads, their heart heavy with the knowledge of what had been lost and what still remained to be decided. The air in the cave felt heavier now, charged with the unspoken truths that lingered in the space between the wanderer and the heartstone. The vision had faded, leaving behind the hollow echo of loss, but the stone still pulsed beneath the wanderer's hand. Its rhythm had changed. It was no longer the slow, somber beat of a dragon's heart. It was faster, sharper, as though sensing that the moment of decision had arrived. The wanderer, their face etched with the lines of sorrow, tightened their grip on the stone. The memories that had washed over them in the vision were not easily shaken, but there was something else, something deeper, that had yet to reveal itself. The heartstone held not just sorrow, but a power that was waiting to be unleashed, a force that could bend the world to the will of its bearer. It was a dangerous temptation and the wanderer could feel it rising within them, a subtle pull that whispered promises of strength, of control, of answers. As their fingers curled around the smooth surface of the gemstone, a surge of energy shot through them, electrifying their veins and filling them with a sense of raw, untamed power. It was like nothing they had ever felt before. The air crackled around them, the very stone of the cave trembling beneath their feet as the heartstone responded to their touch. For a moment, the wanderer felt as though they had become something more, something beyond mortal limits. Their senses sharpened, their awareness expanded, and for the briefest instant, they could feel the pulse of the earth itself. But with that power came something darker. A deep ache began to form in the wanderer's chest, growing with every heartbeat. It was not the sharp sting of pain, but a dull, throbbing sorrow that spread through them like a poison. The more they drew upon the power of the heartstone, the more the grief took hold. Faces began to swim before their eyes, those they had lost, those they had failed. The weight of their past was no longer just a memory. It was a living presence, heavy and cold, pressing down on them with the force of a thousand regrets. The wanderer gasped their breath ragged as they stumbled back from the stone, their heart pounding in their chest. The power was intoxicating, but it came at a price, one that grew with every moment they held the heart stone in their grasp. The sorrow that had been shown to them in the vision was now a part of them, woven into their very soul. It was the price of the heartstone's magic, and the longer they clung to it, the deeper the sorrow would grow. For a long moment, the wanderer stood motionless, 
staring down at the heartstone as it pulsed with its crimson light. The temptation to keep it, to wield the power it offered, was undeniable. With the heartstone, they could bend fate, unravel the mysteries of the world, and reshape the future. They could have everything they had once sought. But the cost, the cost was too high. The ache in their chest deepened, spreading like wildfire through their body. The power of the heartstone came with the weight of an eternal burden, an unshakable grief that would never fade, never lessen. Those who had sought the stone for glory or power had been consumed by it, crushed beneath the weight of its sorrow. And now, the wanderer understood why. The heartstone was not just the heart of a dragon. It was the embodiment of the dragon's final moments. The grief and rage of a creature whose life had been stolen. Its power was inseparable from its curse, and to wield it was to bear that curse forever. The wanderer's mind raced as they stood at the edge of a decision that would change everything. If they kept the heartstone, they would gain unimaginable strength but they would also carry the sorrow of the dragon with them for the rest of their life. The faces of those they had lost would haunt them always, their memories twisted into shadows by the weight of the stone's magic. They would be powerful, yes, but they would also be alone, consumed by a sorrow that would never end. Slowly, reluctantly, the wanderer released their grip on the heartstone. The air in the cave shifted as though a great weight had been lifted. The pulsing of the heartstone slowed, its light dimming to a faint glow. The sorrow that had filled the wanderer's heart began to ease though it did not disappear entirely. The weight of the past would always be with them, but they had chosen not to let it define them, not to let it consume them. The heartstone sat quietly now, its power dormant once more, waiting for the next soul to come and test their worth. The wanderer stepped back, their breath steadying as the echoes of the dragon's sorrow faded into the quiet. They had faced the power of the heartstone, and though it had offered them more than they had ever imagined, they had seen the truth of its curse. The temptation was gone replaced by the clarity of what was truly important. The Heartstone's power had been revealed, but the Wanderer had chosen a different path. The burden of the stone remained in the cave, and as the Wanderer turned to leave, they knew that the final test still awaited them. Whether they could walk away from what the stone had shown them, or whether its sorrow would follow them forever. The wanderer emerged from the cave into a world washed in twilight. The sky bruised with shades of deep purple and fading gold. The wind that swept across the mountain carried with it the scent of pine and the chill of 
above the high peaks, but none of it reached the wanderer. They stood motionless at the cave's entrance, the weight of what had transpired still pressing heavily on their chest. Though they had left the heartstone behind, its presence lingered, as though the cave itself had etched its sorrow into their very bones. The faint pulse of the stone, its slow, eternal heartbeat, seemed to echo in their mind, even though they were no longer within its reach. The power it had offered and the grief that came with it had left an indelible mark. The wanderer began their descent down the winding mountain path, their steps slow and uncertain. The air felt different now, thicker, as though the world itself had shifted in the time they had spent in the cave. The trees seemed taller, darker, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers, and the ground beneath their feet felt more solid, more real than it had before. But the real change was within. At first, it was subtle, just a whisper of sadness, a quiet ache in the background of their thoughts. But as they walked, it deepened, growing into something more profound, something that wrapped itself around their heart and refused to let go. It was as if the sorrow of the heartstone had followed them, clinging to their soul like a shadow they could not shake. The faces from the vision lingered at the edges of their mind, those they had lost, those whose lives had been cut short by their choices. The wanderer had faced the truth of what they had sacrificed, but the grief was not something that could be easily set aside. It was a part of them now, woven into their very being. Every step they took felt heavier, as though they carried the weight of the past on their shoulders. By the time they reached the forest at the base of the mountain, the sky had darkened into night, the stars beginning to shimmer faintly above. The wanderer paused at the edge of the trees, looking back at the towering silhouette of the mountain. The cave was hidden from view but they could still feel its presence, like a distant hum vibrating in their chest. They had chosen to leave the heartstone behind, but its sorrow had followed them nonetheless. The wanderer's gaze fell to the ground, their mind churning with memories and regrets. They had hoped that by walking away from the heartstone, they would be free of its curse. But now, standing alone in the darkness, they realized the truth. The curse was not in the stone itself, but in the choices they had made, in the wounds that had never fully healed. They were not the first to seek the heartstone, and they would not be the last. Others would come, drawn by the same promises of power and knowledge, unaware of the price they would pay. The wanderer had been fortunate enough to walk away, 
but not unscathed. The weight of the past was a burden that could not be cast aside so easily. As they stood at the edge of the forest, the wind stirring the leaves around them, a figure appeared out of the shadows. A familiar face, one that had haunted them since the vision. The wanderer's heart clenched as they recognized the figure, though they knew it was not real. It was a specter of their mind, a ghost born from the sorrow they carried. The figure approached slowly, their eyes filled with the same grief that had filled the vision. You can't outrun it, the ghost whispered, their voice soft and heavy with sorrow. You carry it with you, always. The wanderer said nothing, their throat tightening as the truth of the word sank in. The past could not be undone. The choices they had made, the lives that had been lost, they were all part of the same story. A story that had led them to the heartstone and beyond. No amount of power, no revelation of truth could change that. But you can learn to live with it, the ghost said, their voice gentler now. You can carry the burden without letting it consume you. The wanderer swallowed hard, their eyes stinging with the weight of unshed tears. They had spent so long searching for answers, for a way to make sense of everything they had lost. But in the end, the answers had only brought more questions, more grief. Yet, perhaps, that was the point. Perhaps the journey had never been about finding a way to erase the past, but about learning how to live with it. With a deep breath, the wanderer nodded, the ghost's words settling over them like a fragile peace. The specter faded, leaving the wanderer alone once more, but this time, the loneliness did not feel as suffocating. The burden was still there, but it no longer felt like a curse. It was simply part of the path they had chosen. The wanderer turned away from the mountain, the stars shining faintly above, and began to walk. The journey was not over, but for the first time, they knew where it was leading. The Heartstone's sorrow had followed the Wanderer, but it had also revealed a truth that could not be ignored. The past could not be undone, but it could be carried with grace. The Wanderer would move forward, burdened, but unbroken, toward whatever lay ahead. The forest seemed darker than before, the shadows deeper, the air heavier with the weight of things unspoken. As the wanderer moved among the towering trees, each step felt measured, deliberate, as though the path itself was aware of the decision that hung in the balance. The heartstone had been left behind, but its memory remained, tugging at the corners of the wanderer's mind like a whisper that could not be silenced. The choice was not one of simple abandon or possession. 
The heartstone had given its power freely, but the wanderer had chosen to resist. And yet, that resistance had not freed them. The sorrow remained, lingering like a shadow that could not be outrun. The burden of loss still pressed against the wanderer's heart, a constant reminder that the past was not so easily left behind. The path ahead forked suddenly, dividing into two narrow trails that vanished into the thick underbrush. The wanderer paused, standing at the crossroads, staring down each path as though one might offer an answer, while the other concealed further mysteries. There was no sound in the forest, only the faint rustle of leaves in the night breeze, and the wanderer's own breath, steady but uncertain. In the silence, a voice emerged, soft, distant, like an echo carried on the wind. You must choose. The wanderer turned, but no figure stood behind them. The voice was not real, or at least not of this world. It was the same voice that had spoken from the depths of the cave, the voice of the heartstone, still lingering in the air like a half-forgotten dream. There is no power without sorrow, the voice whispered, its tones filled with both promise and warning. To take the heartstone's gift is to take its grief, but to walk away is to leave the questions unanswered. You cannot escape the choice wanderer. The wanderer's eyes narrowed, their hand instinctively moving to their chest, where the ache of the heartstone's burden still pulsed. The weight of the choice was heavier now, more tangible than ever. It was not merely a decision of what to leave behind, but of what to carry forward. To accept the stone's power would mean embracing a grief that would never fade. Yet with that grief came a clarity, a strength that could change the course of their future. But to walk away choose a life free of its power would leave the wanderer with the knowledge of all they had lost and could never reclaim. The path to the left seemed darker, the trees closer together, their branches twisting overhead like a canopy of bones. It was the path of acceptance the path that would lead the wanderer back to the heartstone, back to the power and the sorrow it held. It was a path that promised answers, but at a cost. The cost of carrying a grief that could never be shaken. The path to the right was lighter. The trees spaced farther apart. And in the distance, the faint glow of the stars could be seen through the gaps in the canopy. It was the path of release, the path that led away from the heartstone and the weight of its curse. It was a path that offered freedom, but also uncertainty, for the wanderer knew that the sorrow of the past would not disappear simply by walking away. The questions that had driven them to the heartstone in the first place would remain unanswered, lingering in the shadows of their mind. 
the wanderer stood at the crossroads for what felt like an eternity, their mind racing, their heart heavy. The choice was not just about power or freedom. It was about the future, about who they would become. The heartstone had shown them what lay within, the sorrow that had shaped their journey. But now they had to decide whether that sorrow would define them or whether they would find a way to carry it without letting it consume them. At last, the wanderer closed their eyes, taking a deep breath and let the weight of the decision settle over them. The wind stirred the leaves around their feet, and for a moment, the forest seemed to hold its breath, waiting for their next move. The choice is yours, the voice whispered one final time, fading into the night. The wanderer opened their eyes, their gaze fixed on the two paths before them. They could feel the pull of the heartstone still, a faint pulse that called to them from the depths of the cave. But the light of the stars on the other path shone just as brightly, offering a different kind of guidance. With a slow, deliberate step, the wanderer made their choice. They turned toward the path to the right, the path of release, of letting go. The trees parted before them, the air growing lighter as they moved forward. The ache in their chest remained, the grief of the past still present, but it no longer felt like a burden that would crush them. It was simply a part of their story, a part of who they had become. The questions that had driven them to the heartstone would remain, but they would no longer seek answers in its sorrow. The wanderer did not look back as they left the mountain behind. The stars guiding their way through the forest. They had chosen to walk away from the heartstone, to leave its power and its curse behind. But they had also chosen to carry the past with them, not as a burden but as a reminder of the journey they had undertaken and the lessons they had learned. The choice had been made and the wanderer's path was now set. The Heartstone's power would remain in the cave, waiting for the next soul to seek it. But the wanderer had found a different kind of strength the strength to walk away from what could not be changed and to embrace the future with the weight of the past still present, but no longer defining. The path stretched before the wanderer, bathed in silver starlight, the forest whispering softly in the wind. The weight of the Heartstone's choice still lingered in their chest, but the air felt lighter now. Each step taken away from the mountain was a step towards something unknown, something that had yet to unfold. The world seemed quieter here, as though the night itself respected the gravity of the decision made. Yet even as the wanderer moved forward, 
the echo of the heartstone sorrow remained, trailing behind like a shadow that refused to fade. They had chosen to leave its power behind, but the past was not something that could be easily cast off. The memories of those they had lost, the choices they had made, they would remain woven into the fabric of their being. The heartstone had shown them that truth. There was no escaping it. As they walked, the path slowly began to descend, leading toward a river that cut through the forest like a ribbon of black silk. The water shimmered in the moonlight, its surface rippling gently with the wind. The sound of the river was soothing, a soft lullaby that seemed to beckon the wanderer closer. The wanderer paused at the water's edge, their reflection wavering in the dark current. It was here, at this quiet, hidden place, that the final weight of the heartstone made itself known. The wanderer knelt by the river, dipping their hands into the cool water, letting the sensation ground them. The river, like the past, flowed onward, relentless and unstoppable, carrying with it all that had been. The wanderer watched as leaves and twigs drifted downstream carried away by the current, their destination unknown. It was then that the voice returned, no longer an echo from the heartstone, but a quiet murmur within the wanderer's mind. The choice was never about the stone alone. It was about the sacrifice you must make. The voice was different now, softer, more intimate. It was not the dragon, not the spectral guardian of the cave. It was their own voice, the voice of their heart, finally emerging from the depths of silence. The wanderer closed their eyes, feeling the weight of the truth that had always been with them. The heart stone had not been the source of the burden. It had only revealed it. The real sacrifice had been made long before the cave was entered, long before the heart stone was sought. It had been made in the moments when they had chosen their path when they had walked away from those they loved in search of something more. But now, standing by the river, the wanderer understood that the greatest sacrifice was not in holding the stone, but in letting go. The past could not be changed. The grief of those lost would remain a permanent part of their journey. But to carry that grief forever, to allow it to define them, would be to remain trapped in the shadow of what had been. The wanderer had walked away from the heartstone, but now they needed to release the sorrow that had bound them to it. They needed to free themselves from the weight of the unanswered questions, from the ache of the what-ifs and could-have-beens. With trembling hands, the wanderer reached into their cloak and pulled out a small, 
weathered trinket. A keepsake from the past. One of the few remnants they had carried with them through all their travels. It was a simple thing. A token given to them by someone they had once cherished. Its meaning had grown heavier with time. Its presence a reminder of the loss that had haunted them. The wanderer held it above the river, the water swirling below. For a long moment, they hesitated, their grip tightening around the trinket, as though afraid that letting it go would mean losing the last piece of that person forever. Let go, the voice whispered. You do not need to carry this any longer. With a deep breath, the wanderer opened their hand. The trinkets slipped from their fingers, falling silently into the river. The water embraced it, pulling it into the current carrying it away into the darkness. The wanderer watched as it disappeared from sight, the weight in their chest lifting ever so slightly. The river's song continued, soft and eternal, as the wanderer rose to their feet. The final sacrifice had been made, not a sacrifice of power or glory, but of the sorrow that had once defined them. The past would always be a part of them, but it no longer held them captive. They had chosen to walk away from the Heartstone's power, and now they had chosen to release the grief that had bound them. As they turned away from the river, the path before them seemed clearer, the night air cooler, crisper. The stars overhead gleamed brighter than before, lighting the way forward. The wanderer took a deep breath, feeling the stillness of the forest settle around them. The journey was not over, but the weight of the past had been left behind in the river's current. And for the first time in a long while, the wanderer felt free. The final sacrifice had been made, not in the relinquishing of power, but in the release of grief. The wanderer had walked away from the heartstone and the sorrow it carried, choosing instead to embrace the uncertain future. And with each step they took along the path, the past grew more distant, no longer a burden but a memory, part of their story, but not the end of it.